Good afternoon, everybody. Afternoon, evening, dusk. Um, I'm just introducing uh, tonight's webinar, which is with Ed Barton and Tom Hamilton, um, and uh, of Hamilton and Kid, and they will be taking us through their 360 immersive film project from this day, which is particularly exciting, as uh, you may be aware on the cusp of a bit of a virtual reality revolution at the moment. So um, this is a great opportunity to talk to people who are directly involved with that kind of technology. Um, if you have any questions throughout, whack them in the comments box. Um, and also uh, feel free to uh, tweet us, which, is be, which will be uh, at escape underscore studios, or ping us a message on Facebook and we're escape studios, easily discoverable. So um, enough from me anyway, I'll stop boring you all. and. Um, the experts press on. Okay, hello, hello. Welcome to our talk about virtual reality and immersive filmmaking. Um, so we've had a bit of a change of kind of lineup. It was originally going to be Ben Kidd of Hamilton and Kidd um, and myself, um, but we've kind of come down with um, infectious diseases. Um, ben has lost his voice completely. I have a chest infection. So Tom I'm is the only one left. Fine, <laughs> so that's why I'm here. Um, so if at any point I stop talking and have to go cough up some disgusting stuff, then yeah, Tom, Tom will kind of take over. Um, so I will let Tom introduce himself, seeing as he wasn't on the kind of agenda and all that. Yeah. So uh, I'm the co-founder of Hunting a Kid with uh, Ben Kid. Um, so I'm a co-founder, but I'm also a creative director. Um, Ed is director of VR, um, so yeah. Um, so I kind of been at the company for the last year or so. Um, my background's in live action and um, kind of traditional kind of DOP type stuff, um, and in advertising. And I've always I've known Ben and Tom for eight nine years, ages basically. Yeah, a long time. Um, and I've joined the company to kind of be part of this kind of move into virtual reality, into 360 video, into very exciting territory. Um, in terms of like Hamilton Kids, the uh, company's existed for five years. Um, background is CGI and animation. CGI, yeah. um, and kind of always we've just been very excited about innovative ways of using technology. Um, so virtual reality is kind of thing at the moment and um, we think it's going to be a big thing and uh, we think it's going to be incredibly interesting and this is kind of just the beginning. Um, so let's start talking about what we're doing. There we go. Um, so just to kind of give a really basic intro um, about what exactly is virtual reality. Um, we think VR is very broad at the moment. To some people it means gaming, to some people it means video, to some people means all of the above to some people it might mean healthcare or education um, we kind of see virtual reality as a platform and um, so it's kind of a platform where you can have content in the same way that a television is a platform um, and you can have gaming on there you can have mass media and that can be 360 video it can be CGI it can be a combination where you have interactive video which uses rendering engines like Unity to give some degree of interactivity to filmmaking and we'll talk a bit more about that at the end. Um, and virtual reality is kind of providing a platform for these worlds to collide. It's the first time where gaming and filmmaking are really tightly kind of integrated. Um, thank you. Um, so the major thing that's kind of spearheading virtual reality at the moment is um, head mounted space. Now virtual reality isn't really a new concept, it's kind of thought up almost as far back as computers themselves in kind of the 1960s um, and again kind of in the 90s it kind of had a bit of a resurgence um, and this is probably what you'd consider the third wave, but as far as we're concerned, this is the first time that virtual reality is actually viable. Um, because headsets aren't cumbersome, displays now have 
really high pixel density, so you can't see, relatively speaking, you can't see in between the pixels. Um, processing power on computers and even phones is high enough to display some really impressive stuff. Uh, 4K video or highly immersive gaming. Um, you're also getting a kind of scenario where you've got low-end mobiles, you've got super high-end virtual reality headsets like um, the Rift and uh, HTC Vive. Um, and there's like a huge spectrum for everybody to have from your kind of grandparents right up to the avid gamer. Um, and the really exciting thing about Head Mountain Displays, they're not even out yet. Um, and that is all kind of happening in the next six to 12 months. So that's why this is really, really exciting at the moment. Um, it's kind of existed, 360 videos existed for a while, but now is really the time that you're actually going to start getting these in kind of consumer areas, getting these, um, getting these in the kind of lounge um, and bedrooms. Um, so here's kind of just a quick breakdown of the landscape as we see it at the moment. Um, the top end, you have the Oculus CV1, uh, which can be releasing in Q1 2016, um, and the Vive. These are kind of the two really, really high-end um, VR headsets. They are going to be fairly expensive. Um, they're going to require a very expensive computer with a very expensive um, GPU, um, but they are very, very high quality and they offer high immersion and kind of importantly in this kind of equation, they're positionally aware, so they use um, cameras or lasers to track where you're on the room, so you've got a degree of movement. Um, kind of moving down the scale, you've got the Sony Morpheus, which also offers positional tracking, but as it's running on a PlayStation 4 engine, doesn't offer the kind of super high-end graphics, but that's going to be more affordable. I think that's going to be really important in kind of getting it into homes. Um, and then moving down the scale a bit further, you've got the Gear VR, which basically uses a Note or an S6. And um, so kind of top-end Samsung phones, which you might already have. Um, and if you do have them, it's quite accessible, because at the moment it retails about £170. Um, doesn't offer you the super high-end end of the equation, um, but it's really interesting entry point, kind of the highest quality way as far as we're concerned to display 360 video. And then at the very low end um, you have Google Cardboard, which is basically cardboard, and so I will show you what these are. So this is a cardboard headset, um, so this camera is very, very simple and um, literally kind of pulls apart and lets you flat pack it, send it, like that could go in on newspapers, that could, could be everywhere basically. This is the entry point for a home. So you basically just slot your phone right in the front, um, it's like a, you want an iPhone. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you, it, um, just converts whatever you've got on your screen to uh, 360 basically. Yeah, put that in there, put it in there, and then look through. Very, very simple, but only costs 10, 15 pounds, so incredibly accessible. Um, and then just to give you a demo of what the Gear VR looks like, much more polished product, has much comfier to use, has straps, and then you just slot your phone in like that. Um, and it's probably good because it switches on when you put it up to your face. Um, further down the scale, virtual reality is really great because it kind of covers an entire spectrum. You can create legacy content from 360 video, from 360 experiences. One of the big areas in which kind of spearheading that at the moment is YouTube 360. Um, Google, because they've created Cardboard, they're also doing something called Spotlight Stories and there's other apps like Verse, which you can download. And the mobile basically uses a gyroscope for motion and you can see around the sphere basically as you move it in any direction. So that's a really great 
accessible entry for 360 video and it's kind of why we originally um, why our first kind of production was 360 video because we saw this as a way to reach mass exposure to get to introduce people to it because most people haven't seen any form of virtuality let alone just the final yeah the, the fact that you can uh, you know on YouTube you can go on basically on a desktop computer on your laptop on your mobile and you know, everybody's got one of those most 99% of people have got it so it's just totally accessible uh, but it is of course just an entry point um, it's, it's not virtual a virtual experience as like an immersive experience it is just a video player at the end of the day so 360 video and this is kind of why we're doing this webinar originally this is kind of our flagship piece in this space so far. Um, the piece we did, um, if you haven't seen it, is on Nissan, if you search for Nismo, N-I-S-M-O 360 on YouTube. It's basically YouTube's kind of flagship 360 piece. It's currently got 1.3 million views. It's only been up um, a couple of months. A million of those in the first four weeks. It's the most popular video that that channel has ever put out. Um, in terms of 360 video, people have been shooting it a long time, almost as long as film itself. Um, but it's, again, because of the headset experiences, because of YouTube 360, because cameras like GoPros are very accessible, this is kind of a time when it's experiencing a big resurgence. It's like a lot of people are shooting content on it for better or for worse. Um, and there's, a, there's like very interesting ways you can use 360 video. It's the only way to shoot see things that are live, it's kind of a way to teleport um, and there's a huge range of solutions from uh, GoPro solutions where you'd have kind of six GoPros around a um, kind of like sphere and um, you've got the very high end, you've got Red Epic solution which is incredibly expensive and then you've got really small cameras which are just one lens, don't necessarily cover the full 360 degrees, maybe do 240 degrees but for most purposes, that's enough. Um, and then there's also the consideration of stereoscopic, which we'll go on to a little bit later because we think stereoscopic's really, really massive when you're involved in it, but actually really, really difficult to do in terms of 360 video and not always the right thing to do. Um, 